Do electric cars really pollute more than gas cars? Now, I know what you are probably screaming at your screen right now. Alex, how can electric cars pollute? They are electric. They don't burn any gas, you dummy. Well, when I heard it for the first time, I was as confused as you are. And then I was like, okay, all right, let's be fair and look at the, um, the, uh, what do you call those things? Um, you can Google them easily. Nobody cares about them anymore. Um, no, not the Kardashians. Oh, 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 um, facts and come to find out if you include the process of actually making electric cars and producing electricity for them to drive it can actually be closer than you think so let's look into how dirty it really is to make and power electric cars and see if they are indeed greener than gas ones after all or if al gore has majorly um inconvenienced us. But by the end of the video, I promise you will be surprised by what the real benefits of the electric cars actually are, and it has nothing to do with climate change. Yeah, nothing to do with it. So let's talk about how much pollution is produced when electric cars are made, powered when on the road and after they die, and then compared to the same lifespan of a gas car. Now, manufacturing an electric car is really not that much different than manufacturing a gas car, except for one thing, the battery. Manufacturing the batteries, on the other hand, does require mining for minerals like lithium and cobalt. And even though they account for a tiny percentage of each battery, their production accounts for a significant amount of greenhouse gas emissions. On the other hand, it's not like gasoline is gently squeezed out of happy unicorns either. That is apparently how ice cream is made. Right. Drilling, extracting and refining oil into gasoline is really not that much more environmentally friendly than mining lithium and cobalt as far as overall pollution is concerned either. However, if we're just talking about the production alone, electric cars do indeed come behind the gas cars. Now, if after buying a brand new car, you bring it home and put it away in your garage as part of your extensive car collection, then Yes, EVs are really, really bad. But if you're one of those weird people like myself who insist on actually driving them on a daily basis, well, then the story continues. As a matter of fact, the story only begins because this is where we come to one of the most controversial parts of the story, where many EV critics that somehow live rent-free in my comment section claim that EVs are nothing but proxies for coal plant pollution. So let's see if my comment section rent-free dwellers are right, or if it's time to hand out some eviction notices. But before that, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by Electron. Look, one of the biggest challenges with owning an EV is finding convenient and reliable ways of charging it. That's why Electron is pioneering great charging solutions that let you charge where you want, when you want, regardless of your charging standard. Like their CCS to Tesla adapter, which lets Tesla drivers charge up to 300 amps at any CCS fast charger across the country, with a charging rate of up to 150 kilowatts, it can allow for up to 180 miles of range per hour. Get one today using the discount code in the description of this video. Okay, so we all know that mining, extracting, refining, and definitely burning gasoline does add a lot to the pollution uh, throughout the entire process. I don't think anyone would argue with that, but now let's talk about what powers electric cars, which is, well, electricity. But where does it come from? Now, you probably have heard some people say, your electric cars are powered by coal, so they're just as dirty as my diesel truck. Well, the only way the electricity that you charge your electric car with comes from coal is that if you're either in one of a handful of states like West Virginia 
or you're in 1985. Because nowadays, the usage of coal in the US is only around 20% and falling, where in states with very high electric car adoption rates, like California, coal-powered electricity is pretty much down to zero. Just like their ability to fight homelessness and crime. What? I, I didn't say anything. And even when the electricity does come from fossil fuels, study after study has shown that even in that case, electric cars still aren't as bad of pollutants as gas cars because power plants are more efficient than car engines due to, well, their bigger size. Now, don't get me wrong, the natural gas is still a major source at one third of the country's electricity, but it is nowhere near as bad for the environment as coal. But at the end of the day, the green sources of energy like solar, wind, and hydro are growing with every day, while the fossil fuel sources are decreasing. And many countries in the world are way ahead of the US. Per Climate Council's numbers, Costa Rica and Norway are producing a whopping 98% of their electricity from renewable sources. Scotland is at 97%. We're losing to Scotland? And more and more countries have goals set to phase out fossil fuels over the next couple of decades as part of the Paris Agreement. But even if you are one of the few EV owners in a coal-heavy state like West Virginia, you can still charge your car with 100% clean energy if you get a solar system. No, no, not that one, that one, yeah. Now, of course, solar panels do have the same challenges of being produced with some pollution, but nowhere near as much as the batteries and they last longer for up to 30 years. Plus, it also depends where they are produced. Now, I do briefly want to talk about battery recycling because it is an environmental issue. However, the battery recycling industry is still pretty young with some really good potentials like repurposing car batteries into home batteries for your solar system. So the big question is, do electric cars ever make up for being dirtier to make at the time of purchase by being cleaner to drive? Well, no matter who did the math, study after study, even by the most conservative estimates, have shown that after two years, electric cars do catch up to gas cars and then, of course, bypass them in being greener. With less conservative and really more realistic estimates pointing to as soon as just several months into the ownership. Now, when I was researching this video, none of the information was that hard to find and there weren't that many polarizing points of view on the map. So why are we even talking about this? Who made this a thing? Well, you wanna guess? Who makes everything in our lives divisive and controversial? EVs and their 1,000 pound batteries are not better for the environment than the internal combustion engine. Politicians. That's Steve Forbes, the two-time Republican presidential candidate and the editor-in-chief of Forbes Media. And of course, that gets reposted by a bunch of keyboard warriors in the comments section of this and other electric car channels repeating it over and over again without bothering to fact check. But at the end of the day, the fact that electric cars are much more environmentally friendly than gas cars is not the reason why I have been an electric car owner, enthusiast, and a journalist for over 10 years now. It is not. It has nothing to do with climate change at all. You see, another fact that everyone seems to ignore is that passenger cars and pickup trucks do not contribute to climate change that much. Transportation in general is not even the biggest contributor to climate change. But even if it was, it is the industrial transport, like airplanes, ships, buses, and semi-trucks that do most of the damage. You want to know what the real benefit of the electric cars is? Well. It's the fact that they do not contribute to millions of respiratory-related deaths caused by pollution, specifically in bigger cities like Beijing, 
Rome, Houston, where I'm at right now, and Bangkok, where I will be moving to in a couple of months. I even bought this little air quality meter the other day, and I bring it with me everywhere I go uh, because I really like my lungs. Oh, and one more thing. This was the reason why I bought my very first Tesla back in 2012, when it wasn't cool. We will not need to fight wars in oil-rich regions of the world if we're not going to have any interest in oil. Now, if you think that the only benefit of electric cars is that you won't be poisoning everything around you, well, you are in for a big surprise because they can actually save you some money, but also are very fast. So. Pick one of these two and I will tell you all about it. Other than that, see you guys next time and remember to stay charged.